The greatest threat to our planet is the belief that someone else will save it. Sustainability is a mindset. It's not just about our behaviors, like whether we carry a tote bag or not, although more on that later. It also is inextricably linked to our value system, to how we relate to our environment, to nature, to other life. Today, we're going to talk about how we can shift to a more sustainable and minimal mindset. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to my channel. Let's talk about the existential threat of climate change. We are currently experiencing an unprecedented environmental crisis. Atmospheric CO2 levels are at their highest in half a million years. The ozone layer, or the sunshield of the Earth, is developing massive holes. Ice sheets are melting, and our air, water, and soil are contaminated with toxic particulates. Forests are burned, land is overfarmed, and oceans are overfished. Billions of tons of waste is produced each year with no end in sight. How did we get into this mess? For starters, the human population has grown from 5 billion to 8 billion in a single century. And since the first industrial revolution, we have manipulated and mined the earth in ways never before seen. It is fairly uncontroversial to say that this unprecedented environmental crisis is primarily human driven. There is something about our society, our norms, and our values that have exacerbated the natural cycles of the earth. We've taken it a bit too far, and I believe it has everything to do with the traditional Western mindset. Traditional Western philosophy often begins at the first principle that humans are at the top of the pyramid. For example, the Bible in Genesis declares that man has dominion over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And John Locke, who inspired modern liberalism and the US Constitution, wrote that the earth and all creatures within it were given to man for his comfort and convenience, and that we ought to mix our labor with the earth to create, to obtain, and to improve. And if you live in the West, you need only look around to see how these two foundational texts have altered the way humans navigate through the world. And indeed, with the advent of the first manufacturing technologies, Western culture and Western economy has prioritized innovation, production, efficiency, speed, individualism, and capitalism. Now, I'm not here to argue that these values are inherently wrong. Innovation is necessary, and we've created some pretty incredible technology. What a time to be alive. But there's no denying that there's something seriously wrong when trash is accumulating, Natural resources are depleted and contaminated when corporations are the most politically powerful, when capitalism convinces us that we need more and more things to be happier, to be better. If we are serious about solving or assuaging our environmental crisis, something's gotta give. So what if we radically changed our values, our worldview, our mindset? What would that world look like? In my opinion, the best place to start is to look at indigenous philosophy. First and foremost, there is no monolithic indigenous culture. There are more than 5,000 indigenous societies that speak 4,000 languages across 90 different countries. But many of these indigenous cultures seem to share a common thread. First, indigenous cultures often begin with a fundamentally spiritual worldview which lends itself to a feeling of interconnectedness with the environment, with other life forms, nature at large. I made a video about spirituality and you can check it out at this link. Second, indigenous cultures believe that humans are a part of nature rather than separate from it and certainly not dominant over it. And third, humans ought to navigate the world keeping in mind values like self-discipline, balance, gratitude, reciprocity, longevity, and mindfulness about how much we take and how much we give. No waste and no greed. That is why there is empirical evidence to show that land and resources under the care of indigenous communities are the most healthy. So clearly we have a lot to learn from the indigenous value system. 
But let's also take a deeper look at our behaviors and the choices that we make. This is where we must take an inventory of our life. Here are some guidelines to get started on your journey. We vote with our wallet. How we choose to spend our money matters. In other words, which companies, brands, and products are we supporting and encouraging more of? For example, the clothing industry is one of the most egregiously unsustainable industries. Are you supporting clothing companies that use recycled materials or sustainable fabrics? Or do you support companies that produce massive amounts of fast fashion that are being thrown away overwhelming thrift stores and most of the time ending up in landfills. The first thing I do is I look at the tag. Is it made from synthetic or plastic based material or is it made from cellulose or plant-based material. Here is a list to keep in mind. Sometimes it's necessary to draw a hard line of which brands and which companies and products you will support and those you won't. Thankfully, we have so many options that we don't have to support unsustainable companies anymore. I think a lot of people waste a lot of clothing because they don't understand their personal style. Another question to ask yourself is, do you buy and return, buy and return? If you think about the packaging and the transportation, that is a form of being wasteful as well. The second way that we can alter our habits is to examine where in our lives we are needlessly consuming single-use plastic and where can we cut that out? Plastic bags, straws, plastic utensils, to-go containers, shower bottles, but I must admit that there are some areas where it's impossible to get rid of plastic completely. Which leads me to my next point. It's all about progress, not perfection. We are improving our behaviors little by little over time. Ultimately, the onus cannot just fall on the individual to make better choices. The onus must also fall on corporations that are producing the things that we are consuming. Also, it falls on government to enact policies that encourage sustainable practices and discourage unsustainable ones. Another way that you can be more sustainable and minimal is to get crafty. Save jars, ropes, cardboard boxes, things that you can reuse for another purpose, and also learning how to repair and hem your clothing yourself. I think it's important to end this video with a message of hope. With each passing generation, we are learning more and more about our relationship to the earth and how we can keep up with innovation and demand doing it responsibly and sustainably and making choices, using our money, voting in such a way that is also in the spirit of sustainability. And I think that's all for today. As always, thank you so much for being here. Please like this video, leave a comment with your thoughts, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more philosophy. I'll see you next time.